any of these approaches are going to prepare your child well for life. And if your goal is biblical discipleship and good character in your children, again, you can accomplish that goal with using any of the five approaches. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am so excited that you are with me today. This is part of our homeschool survival series, and this is one of the parts of this series that I've been most excited about because I think it's a question that's going to be answered that so many people have asked. And so for the next several weeks, we are going to talk about teaching styles. And um, I I was looking for someone who would be able to do this, talk about teaching styles with me. And I had Sonia Schaefer, who many of you are familiar with from Simply Charlotte Mason. And we had talked and she's going to come on to talk about Charlotte Mason. And then someone said, well, you know, she can talk about all the main teaching styles. And I was like, oh, that's wonderful. So she came on um, this time as well. And first we're going to launch into this part of the series, giving you an overview of all of the different teaching styles. Um, So I think you're going to be really encouraged by this episode. But first, before we launch into it, I would like to thank our sponsor, CTC Math. If you guys are looking for a great online math curriculum, go to ctcmath.com. You can try it for free, see if it works well for your kids. I think you will be be pleased um, with what they have, ctcmath.com. Sonia, I am so excited to have you on. I know I have told my audience oftentimes that I have a bucket list of people that I am looking forward to having on the podcast someday. And and God is so good that he always brings exactly the right guests when we need them to be on the podcast. And so after years, literally years of having you on my list, finally, you are here. And I'm really, really excited to have you with me. So welcome to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. Thanks so much, Yvette. I'm excited to be with you. Yeah, thank you. Well, before we jump into this, I would love for you to just give a brief bio of who you are and what you do. Sure. I'm Sonia Schaefer. I am a homeschool mom of four girls. I call them my little women. Um, Three of them are now graduated. My fourth one is currently still doing school every day, but she has special needs. So she is 23, but we keep doing school because um, we're still in, you know, second, third grade in some subjects. And um, it keeps me in the trenches, keeps me in touch with what all's going on. So I've been schooling for about 25 years or so, I think. And you live in Georgia, right? I do. Yeah, near Atlanta. I grew up in the Midwest, so I don't have the beautiful Southern drawl. But every (laughs) once in a while, a y'all jumps in there. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) We've been down here for 20 years, so, you know. Isn't that funny? When we moved from California to Georgia, that was one of the most shocking things to me that it was that people would say y'all or all y'all or all y'alls. And I was Mm -hmm. like, what? And then I felt really awkward saying you guys, because in California, (laughs) if you say y'all, people look at you funny. And uh, so that was a really funny transition for our family of going from you guys to y'alls. But I still, I still cannot do the y'alls. I just can't. I don't know. Sometimes, like you said, sometimes it will just slip out with, you know, unintentionally. <laughs> and my <laughs> girls do that sometimes too. We're like, you just said y'all. Uh, that's why Oklahoma is a great place because it's a perfect mix of Southern, you know, the, the East Coast and the West Coast. And you can say y'all are you guys and no one looks at you funny. So yeah. it's great. Yeah. Well, I am really excited for this episode because here's my story. About almost 12 years ago, I guess it was, I went to my first homeschool convention and I remember going to a workshop. And I told you, I said, it might have been you. I don't remember. I literally have no clue who taught this workshop. But I don't it was... think I was doing one 12 years ago on this. Okay. So, so it probably yeah. wasn't you. I, I don't remember who it was, but I went to this workshop and it was all about teaching styles. And this very sweet lady goes up and she starts talking about traditional and classical and Charlotte Mason and unit studies and eclectic and unschooling and Montessori and all these things. And I was like, what is she even talking about? And she did an excellent job, but I remember walking out of there because again, my oldest was four at the time. I had said I'd never homeschool. So I was brand new. I mean, we had just decided that we were going to consider this for her first year, you know, at four years old. I knew nothing. I was not educated as a teacher. I knew nothing about, I didn't know what a manipulative was. I knew nothing about teaching or homeschooling. And so all of these words flying around, I was like, well, I'm 
so excited about this homeschool thing now and all of these teaching styles, but I don't know what she just said. And I was so <laughs> confused and overwhelmed, but excited at the same time, because I knew that what she was talking about was, was exciting and fun and that I would figure it out as I went along, which of course I have. And so I'm really glad to have you on because right now there are so many parents bringing their kids home and they're looking at homeschooling for next year. And they're trying to figure out what does this look like and how do I teach my kids? So I would love for you to jump into this idea of, uh, that there's five main teaching styles. And so we're going to talk about those five. And then over the next few weeks, we're going to break apart each one of those teaching styles with a different guest. You're going to come back with us and talk about Charlotte Mason, but we're going to break these all apart and we're going to dig really deep. So today's going to just be an overview of these five teaching styles and then just hang on because we're going to talk more about this. So I'm going to let you kind of introduce what they are and how they all work together. Well, the best thing about having five styles is that you have options. You are not locked in. So many times when we think about teaching our kids, all we think about is the way we were taught because that's our only frame of reference. That's all we've got in our heads. So hopefully this episode will enlarge that, that view and help you see that there are other ways you could approach this. It doesn't have to look exactly the way you were taught or exactly the way your children have been taught to this point if they've already been in a classroom or something. You have other choices that you can make if it would fit your family best. And that's the key, Yvette. I want each family here who is watching this to be able to find the approach or approaches that fit their family best, because that's what makes the difference between homeschooling being a drudgery versus being a joy and an adventure. Yeah. So when I think about the options, I like to compare it to food styles, cuisines. It just makes it easier for me to wrap my head around it somehow. Um, so as you said, we're gonna just paint this in broad strokes. So sure. let's warm up here by thinking about food in broad strokes, all right? Okay. So if we were going to describe Italian food to someone who had never heard of Italian food, what words would you use to describe it, Yvette? Oh, probably tomatoes, garlic, um, spices, oregano, pasta, of course. Yeah, yeah. So that's just broad strokes. I mean, I have a friend who went to New York for a week to focus only on Southern Italian cuisine. So, you know, oh, wow. There's varieties sure. within Italian, but we're just talking broad strokes here. All right. Yeah. So now let's, let's do broad strokes for Chinese. What words would you use sure. to describe that? Rice, noodles, shrimp, beef. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I think those because those are what I love. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Soy sauce. Soy sauce. Right. Not that, so spicy yeah. typically, but for me, but I know some mm -hmm. people like spicy Chinese. Like some be. people like spicy homeschool, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's the same thing. We're going to just paint these broad strokes for the five main flavors. And then that would kind of help people to get a feel for, oh, yeah, that one sounds interesting or eh, not so interested in that one. Just kind of help them narrow it down so that in the subsequent episodes where we're diving deeper into each of the five, they mm -hmm. can get more details and explore more to find out if that's going to be a good fit for their family. Yeah, love it. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. What we do at IEW is break through the, the noise of the grammar and the writing prompts and we say, this is what you do, step by step. And I've witnessed it over and over again, both watching Andrew teach and hearing from parents, this is the best writing program. We've made it so easy and made it really affordable. So any mom can teach writing to their children using our course, and we guarantee it. To try three weeks of free lessons, visit IEW.com. We are back with Sonia. Okay, so we're talking about cuisine, which it's so funny because my listeners know I do not like to cook. 
but I do like homeschooling. <laughs> so <laughs> this will be a cooking lesson that I will really enjoy. <laughs> That's not having to do with me being in the kitchen, though sometimes we do school in the kitchen as well. Um, I, as a matter of fact, right before we started podcasting, my daughter was in the kitchen doing her math homework. So um, typically, though, we do not do um, homeschool in the kitchen. And uh, so, yeah, let's talk about this. What are the five different flavors? Okay, the five that we're going to talk about are traditional, classical, Charlotte Mason, unit studies, and unschooling. Those are the five main ones. There are some others as well, other players in the field, but those are the five that you'll probably hear most often. So let's yep. start with those. Okay. All right. Traditional, broad strokes here. All right. Um, Yvette, did you go to the school of the yellow bus when you were growing up? Well, I didn't take the yellow bus, but I went to a private school uh, my whole okay. life. So yes, regular traditional school. Sitting in the classroom. Yep. And so you have textbooks mm -hmm. for each subject. You probably have workbooks that go with it. Yep. And you were assigned to read this section of the textbook, right. answer these questions, mm -hmm. and remember that information until the test. Right. All right. So that's what I call traditional. It's what many of us are familiar with from our backgrounds. Yes. And you can do your homeschool that way. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If that's going to be the best fit for you and your children, you can absolutely do a traditional homeschool. Um, now, I like to summarize each of these five flavors with one word. Would that be all right? Yes, absolutely. Throw that in. Absolutely. It just kind of helps me put a little tag on yep. each one. For traditional, to me, the key word is no. Okay. There are certain things that a traditional curriculum thinks your child should know in his head mm -hmm. at certain grade levels. So it's very much about what facts do we have in our brains. Right. Okay. okay. All right. That's traditional. And by the way, that's just the name I put on it. Right. All right. If, if you go call up a homeschool curriculum provider and say, I need traditional, they might not know what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's just the term I use sure. for it. All that's right. That's what I use as well. Yes, traditional. Okay. All right. Good, good. All right. Should we move on to classical? Let's do it. All right. Classical. I'm talking about the current classical, which is based on something called a trivium. Trivium starts with T-R-I, like tricycle, triangle. Mm -hmm. And what do those things have in common? Here's a hint. Three. Three. That's Trinity. right. Trinity. Yes, exactly. The trivium is three stages of your child's development mentally. So usually the first stage is what they call the grammar stage, and that's for children about six to nine or so, nine or 10. Mm -hmm. And in that stage, the big emphasis is on memorization, because children that young can usually memorize very easily. And so they are presented with many facts to memorize during the grammar stage. Then in the middle, the second stage of that trivium is called the dialectic stage, and that's for about 10 to 13 or so. And that's where they're teaching the children how to think logically, how to reason. I've, some friends of mine who use this approach say that kids in that stage like to argue. Yep. <laughs> so but let's teach them how to argue logically. Right. <laughs> so. Which can be a little scary for a parent. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So logic is a big um, emphasis mm -hmm. in that middle stage of the trivium. And then from about 13 or 14 up through graduation, that's the rhetoric stage. And that's where you help the child learn how to put their thoughts together and present them in a persuasive manner. Mm -hmm. They can state their opinion and they can support it. So those are the three stages. And so your work in a classical homeschool curriculum is going to be kind of geared toward those things in mm -hmm. those different grade levels. Does yep. that make sense? Totally. Yep. Okay. It makes sense to me. I know that there are some parents listening who are like, what is she talking about? But hang on, because we're going to get deep into this in the next few weeks. So yes, yeah. continue on. That's classical. That's classical. And and what is your word for classical? Because you said you had a word yes. that no was your word for traditional. The one word I would use to summarize classical is think. 
Okay. Because there's a big emphasis on logic and reasoning and teaching children how to think. Okay. That's a big emphasis for classical. Great. Okay. All right. Third flavor is the one that I use. It works for my family, and I'm not here to try and convince everybody to use it in this session. I want you to find the one that will work for you. But Charlotte Mason um, is a little bit different in that rather than using textbooks that present the facts, she used literary style books. So it's still the facts are in there, but they're usually wrapped in a story, mm -hmm. a well-written story. And then rather than read the questions and answer them at the end of the section you read in the textbook, like we talked about with traditional and classical, the Charlotte Mason is you read a portion of that literary style book, and then you tell it back in your own words as much as you can. So that's called narration. And okay. we do that instead of the question and answer part of things. Right. And then another big difference with Charlotte Mason is that there's a wide variety of subjects that are covered. Um, but you're not doing everything every day. So it's, it, it, it doesn't last a long, long time. In fact, her lessons are very short, but there's a lot of different things happening. So during the week, you've got different things happening on different days in order to keep that variety going. Okay. In. And then now you'll have to stop me because I do whole day workshops on Charlotte right. Mason. So make sure I'm not <laughs> overgoing here. But um, let me give you the one word I would use to describe okay. a Charlotte Mason approach then. Sure. That would be the word grow. Okay. Because grow. to Charlotte Mason's philosophy, the goal of teaching your child is so that child will grow as a person, a whole person, not just the mind. Okay. Okay. Got it. Then uh, what should we do next? Unit studies? Yes. Let's do unit studies. Okay. The flavor of unit studies is where you choose one topic. And you try and see how many school subjects you can tie to that topic. Now, let me throw something in here. Okay. As we're talking about these different flavors, in all of them, there's a spectrum, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go anywhere from using a little bit of it to using it and only it purely all the way in. Right. Okay. And so it's the same thing with unit studies. Um, if you're really into it, you're trying to get every single subject to somehow attach to this one topic that you're covering. So for example, um, if your topic is uh, ancient Egypt, let's say, all right, that's the topic. So history, we're gonna be studying ancient Egypt, of course. Science, maybe we'll study deserts because there's a lot of deserts in Egypt. Yeah. Um, Maybe for math, we're going to be figuring out the, how to figure out area of a triangle mm -hmm. for a pyramid, okay? Right. Something like that. Um, for art, we might make a paper mache Pharaoh's mask. There's a lot of hands-on projects in unit studies too. Usually uh, you're, you're making things, you're creating things, arts and crafts, cut and paste, mm -hmm. those types of things are included. So like for science, I'm sorry, for spelling, you're learning how to spell Pharaoh. You're learning right. how to spell Egypt. And, and if the kids are under your skin, you are learning how to spell Tutankhamun, you know, or whatever <laughs> you want to do. But you want to tie as many of those school subjects into your one topic as possible in a unit study approach. And probably the one word I would use for unit studies is the word do. Okay. Because... The kids are doing, they're learning by doing something, keeping their hands busy so okay. that they're, they're constantly doing with their hands. Okay. Got it. Okay. All right. Do. So, so Ready far we have traditional and your word for that is no. We have classical. Your word for that is think. We have Charlotte Mason. Your word for that is grow. Unit studies. Your word for that is do. Yes. Okay. And then we have Fifth one flavor, main one. Yeah. The last one we're going to talk about today. And that's unschooling. Usually in unschooling, again, you've got that spectrum. You know, some people do a little bit of it. Some people do it all the way. Unschooling all the way is you don't have any set curriculum. 
It is all based on your child's interests at the time. Mm -hmm. So if this child is interested in uh, race cars, then we're just going to feed that interest. We're going to find everything we can. You know, there isn't a set curriculum. You just find materials wherever. You can go to the Indy 500 if you want to, you know, whatever. Yeah. We'll feed that interest and help that child learn all he can about that. And then when that interest wanes, maybe next will be butterflies. Okay, we're going to feed that interest. So it's pretty much letting the child's interests lead the way. Right. And you're just feeding those interests. Right. But uh, it's so, still guided by mom or dad. It, yeah, yeah. It can be, again, it depends on where you are on the spectrum. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the word that I would use to describe unschooling is the word live. Live. Okay. Because you're learning through life, through mm -hmm. real life experiences, real life interacting with other people, right. hands on real life projects. Yeah. Um, another example of unschooling would be. Uh, we're going to build a house. So mm -hmm. set aside yep. everything else. The kids are just going to help me build the house. Yeah. And they're going to learn a lot of things about a lot of things yes. through that project. So I think of the word life yep. as the word for unschooling. I love that. You know, unschooling is an interesting one because we have spent a lot of time over the last five years doing what I would consider unschooling, but not not schooling. You know, and I think people get those two mixed up sometimes. Unschooling yes. does not mean that you don't school at all. It just means that you, again, it's guided by parent, but more child-led. And ours hasn't been child-led. It's just been led by traveling and experience and, you know, the things that God's called us to do with Schoolhouse Rocked. And so we've had really a very, um, quite an eclectic mix of all of these. And I love that you talk about that, that there is a spectrum where not every person has to, you, you don't have to adhere to one specific thing. You don't have to say, I am only going to do traditional, or I am only going to do classical or only Charlotte Mason or only unit studies. You can use little bits and pieces of all of these, if that's what works best for your family, or you can go all in with any of these. And so that's what we're going to do over the next few weeks. We're going to break apart all of these and we're going to see what works best for each family. But before we close today, I know that you have a fun quiz that you like to give out. Um, and we're going to go through this pretty quickly, but I would love for you to do this. And then we're going to put this quiz in the show notes. So don't get stressed out, moms, dads, if you're listening to this and you can't get through every question, maybe just listen to it and then go back and look at the show notes and answer these questions. And this is going to help you kind of figure out where you might fall on this, you know, spectrum of different teaching styles. Um, so I'll let yeah, you so that, jump into these, this quiz. Once you can identify which of these styles have piqued your interest mm -hmm. and eliminate the ones that haven't, then you'll be able to dive more deeply into those. And I would highly, highly encourage if you have husband and wife both watching this, each of you take the quiz separately oh, and then yeah. compare your answers. I've seen it over and over, Yvette. I've seen they are both on the exact same page. Mm -hmm. That's great. Now you know where you're headed and why. Yeah. Or the other thing I've always seen is that they're exact opposites. Ah. But that's good too, yeah. because then you can compare notes. You can discuss why this is important to you. What aspects of it? Do we want to use that approach for some subjects? Which subjects? Right. Do we want to use this approach for other subjects? Just so you can both be on the same page and mm -hmm. entering this journey together. That's yeah. very important. Yeah, so, I love it. All right, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna read a, a sentence, and if it describes you, then at the end, I'm gonna tell you a letter that I want you just to jot down the letter so you don't have to scribble down the whole sentence, all right? Just put down the letter, and at the end, count up how many of each letter you have written down. And that will help you see which one you have more of a leaning toward, which approach. All right. Okay. So if you're concerned about keeping lockstep with the local school system, then write down the letter T. Some parents know that their kids are only going to be homeschooled a short time and they want to put them back in and to make that re-entry more smooth, then 
that's what I mean by lockstep with the local school system. A okay. T approach would probably be better for you. If you don't necessarily want to plan, you prefer to be spontaneous. That's just how you roll. And your family loves that too. Then write down the letter N. All right, if you place great emphasis on having facts memorized, having them just at the tip of your mind, write down the letters, two letters here, T and C. If you love hands-on projects, you know, um, Hobby Lobby is your favorite place in the whole world, <laughs> that type of thing. And you don't mind spending the time on getting them ready or cleaning up after them. That's just your happy place. Write down the letter U. If you think that the teacher should be the fountainhead of all knowledge, the child has a question, he comes to the teacher, the teacher tells him what or where to find it, then write down these three letters. Three of the approaches cater to that. Um, T, C, and U. Write down those three. If you want your homeschool to be described as rigorous and challenging, that's how you want it described then write down the letter C. Now this one's a little bit odd maybe. If you don't want to be different, here's what I mean by that. Some of these approaches are more well known than others to people outside the homeschool community and sometimes to people inside the homeschool community. And so if you want to be able to tell somebody, oh, I do this and they understand it pretty easily, mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. You don't really want to be different. Right. You want an easy comparison there. Then write down T, C, and U. Those are probably the most well-known styles. If you love the idea of learning from good literature and from books that make the subject come alive, then write down the letter L. If you want to use natural, gentle methods, all right, kind of as opposed to rigorous and challenging. That's almost the opposite. Natural, gentle methods while still holding your children to a high standard, then write down the letter L. If you like having your child decide what to learn and when, that just works better for your child, write down an N. If you want to linger with art, and music and nature and handcrafts, not just skim over them, but linger with them. Write down these two letters, L and N. If you want to teach the way that you were probably taught, so you don't have to learn something entirely new, you feel like you're reinventing the wheel almost, write down a T. I'm gonna guess that's probably the one you're most familiar with. Yeah. <clears throat> then if you believe that true education comes from having a personal relation with what was studied, not just recognizing a word on a test, but really have a personal relationship with that topic or subject or person in history, write down these two letters, L and N. Both of those focus on forming those personal relations. The next one is if you want your child to learn how to self-educate, to be able to teach himself or herself for the rest of her life. Write down L and N. If you live and die by standardized test scores, now maybe you don't want to live and die by them. Different states have different laws and regulations. And I'm sure Yvette, you've probably touched on this or will yes. to help people find out Absolutely. What re is required in their state or province. Mm -hmm. um, some states put a heavy emphasis on standardized test scores. Right. So if you need to put a big emphasis on that, probably T and C are going to be your best approaches to help you meet those requirements. And then a couple more. If you have a large family, you want to teach all 26 of your kids together <laughs> <laughs> for as many subjects as possible. The two approaches that will be easiest to do that with are L and U. Write down those two letters. 
If, on the other hand, it's going to work better for you to have each child on his or her own separate track, then write down these three letters, T, C, and N. And then I like to give a few statements that just to encourage you that it, these are going to be true no matter what approach you use. You can accomplish these objectives with any of the five. If you want something that will work for a special needs child, I have a special needs child. And if you want something that will work for your special needs child, you can use any of the five. Hmm. You're going to need to tweak it, of sure. course, to fit your child, but you can use any of the five or aspects of any of the five. And if you have that large family of 26 kids or however large you want to make it, you can use any of the approaches. I've seen it work with different sized families. And on the flip side, if you are homeschooling only one child, you can use any of the five approaches. Also, if you are working from home or you're working outside the home and you have to fit your homeschooling around your work schedule, you can do that with any of those five approaches. Maybe you're also going to be calling in other people to help you with the teaching, grandparents or your spouse, and you're going to be handing things off. Again, you can do that with any of the five. I often get asked, which of the five approaches will best prepare my child for college? You know what the answer is? Any of the five is going to help you prepare your child for college. And if you want to take a step back and lift your eyes to a broader perspective, because life is longer than four years of college, and not every child is called to go to college. But any of these approaches are going to prepare your child well for life. And if your goal is biblical discipleship and good character in your children, again, you can accomplish that goal with using any of the five approaches. So let me give you what each of those letters stands for, and you can count them up and see what you came up with. T stands for traditional. C stands for classical. L stands for Charlotte Mason. U for unit studies, and N for unschooling. So count them up. Some, you might find that you've got um, a tie between two of them. That's great. Look at both, tune into those episodes where both of those, where we dive deeper into each of them and start researching more and more to find out which one will be a good fit for your family or if both of them are going to be. As you said, you can, you can teach certain subjects with this approach and certain subjects with this. That's the beauty of homeschooling. Yeah. You've got options. You can make it fit the family that God has given you and the children that God has put in your home. Ah, oh, that is so fun. I love doing that. I actually had not done the quiz before. And it's so funny. I was writing down all of my scores and I'm heavy on Charlotte Mason, which is funny because oh, yeah. I actually don't consider myself like if someone said, how do you homeschool? I would not say I'm a Charlotte Mason homeschooler. I definitely would say I'm more eclectic, but mm -hmm. for sure we lean more Charlotte Mason than anything else. And so in doing this quiz, <laughs> I, you know, I, that that's where I land. And, and I see that we do like to do a lot of reading. Um, literature is a big part of our homeschooling as well. And, um, and I love that. So, which I know literature is also a big part of unit studies and classical mm -hmm. and, you know, so I really kind of do fit all of these different things. Sure. Um, um, and again. And, and your, your audience will find out more of yeah. how that all works together in those upcoming episodes. Yeah. Right, exactly. So yes, we, like I said before, we are going to spend the next several weeks and we're going to do a whole week on each of these individual teaching styles. So we're going to do a whole week on traditional whole week on classical, Charlotte Mason unit studies and unschooling. And there's going to be a few other things kind of thrown in there as well that fit in with each of these categories. So, and, and listen to all of them, because I think you're going to find, like Sonia said, that there are bits and pieces of each of them that may work for your family. And it depends on your teaching style, on your personality, on your kids teaching or learning styles and their personalities. I mean, there's so much that goes into this. So don't let this overwhelm you. We're doing this series 
to actually bring rest to you. We want this to be something that's going to be helpful and encouraging, not something that's going to overwhelm you even more where now you have to put a label on yourself. You don't need to label yourself with anything for anyone. The most important thing, as you said, is to point our kids towards Christ. That is ultimately what our goal is. We talk about that on the podcast all of the time. Whatever style you're using to teach your kids, whatever is best fitting for your family, the most important thing is to point your kids' hearts towards Christ. And so there are tons of curricula that, I mean, there there, you know, are a million things that you can use to do that. And so that's why we're here. That's why Schoolhouse Rock exists, to encourage you and equip you to homeschool with excellence and to finish well. Um, Sonia, thank you so much for joining me today um, to give a brief overview of these different teaching styles. This has been really fun. And I will, as I said, again, I will put these um, notes in there. I'll put the quiz in the show notes so that you guys can see it and do that at home on your own and maybe see how you lean. So, Thanks so much for having me, Yvette. It was ab- fun. Absolutely. You guys, thank you for listening. I hope you have a great rest of your day. If you've not yet watched the movie Schoolhouse Rocked, go to schoolhouserocked.com. It is now out on DVD, you guys. It's so exciting. I'm so glad that you have access to that now. So many people have asked for that. You can still stream it. You can watch it on DVD. There are easy ways to get it. Go to schoolhouserocked.com. Also, if you have not yet left a review for this podcast, we would greatly appreciate it if you would do that. Um, go to iTunes or whatever podcast app you have that allows you to leave a review and uh, just let us know how we are being a blessing to you and your family. And also feel free to email us podcast at schoolhouserocked.com. Let us know if you have questions, if you have guests that you would like to hear from, how we can encourage you in your homeschool journey. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you back here next week. Bye. In the very beginning, I had several friends that wanted me to homeschool. And frankly, they were a reason why I didn't want to homeschool because it looked too perfect to me. Like I would look at families on the covers of magazines and they had matching jumpers and they were all playing an instrument. And I was thinking, I can't, I can't relate to that, right? They're growing their own wheat and grinding it into flour. And I thought, I, that's not me. Like I'm, I'm going to the store and, you know, getting Wonder Bread for my kids and trying to figure out how to use my crock pot, right? And I realized very quickly that the best thing about homeschooling wasn't the fact that we had it all together. It was the fact that we were learning to live together, the fact that we were learning to grow together and learn together. And we learned through our mistakes. I want my kids to know two things when they leave my house. I want them to know that I loved them. That's the first thing I want. I I don't want them to look back on their years at home and wonder if I love them. I want them to know that I love them. The second thing is that I want them to know that I trusted the Lord that I trusted God for every decision that I make. And when I make a wrong decision, which we do as parents, and when the day goes bad, and when we burn the dinner, and when we stub our toe, and when our kids push us to the end of what we think we can do, and we say the word that we never thought we'd hear come out of our mouth, or we make a wrong decision, we have an opportunity to go back and make it right.